So first of all, uh, thank you one and all for uh, joining this presentation. So today, uh, I thought I'll discuss uh, my experiences in uh, games-based learning in the corporate world. Um, let me just get started with the story. In my company, Cognizant, there was a delivery manager of a large uh, Fortune 500 client, which had uh, revenues of 30 million USD. He was struggling with uh, client retention. Client was very unhappy with the uh, value delivered. He also ha had a lot of uh, team attrition. So both from an employee engagement perspective and the client engagement perspective, it was a disaster during the years of 2010 and 2011. But over a period of a year's time, completely things changed over. During a client visit, the client was bowled over by the uh, value articulated by the team. Uh, the business that was at risk of uh, going away from Cognizant, in fact, uh, turned around and we ended up getting 20% more business. The employee engagement index also shot up by 15%. The team also won the first prize in innovation at the company level. And that was my team and the manager is me. So this is me and my team receiving the prize from the chairman of our company in 2012. The reason why I narrated was that story was that was my first twist with games-based learning. This was kind of like an accident that happened in my life, but it was a very positive accident, I would say. Now, I was thinking, was it a one-off fluke that something miraculously happened? I decided to experiment. In 2013, 14, I moved away from delivery teams and I moved into the operations team, which basically uh, is related to the profit and loss management. Here again, the struggle was similar. Uh, I had to educate a lot of folks on uh, the profit and loss uh, concepts, revenue management, different kinds of costs that uh, you incur in running a business. It was all new because typically delivery managers on the ground, they are good at uh, their delivery capabilities, people management capabilities, but it, when, when it came to finance, they, they, they found it very difficult to understand. And it was extremely essential for me that they understood the concepts in order that the operations initiatives be successful. So we tried out an experiment. What we decided was we uh, designed a small snake and ladder uh, kind of a game for explaining margin concepts where the snakes stood for activities that brought down the margins like uh, where, where do you incur costs and the uh, ladder stood for activities that boosted the revenues. And in order to educate the people on revenue forecasting concepts, we designed a simple Ludo-based game where uh, the ground level managers started uh, doing the forecasting, vetted it with their next level, and so on, up to the leadership level. So both these were game-based uh, learnings of the concepts. We took it to the teams. We uh, conducted multiple sets across different cities. and. Uh, Expl tried explaining the concepts through these games. And you know what happened? These were the feedbacks that we got. All of them just loved it. There was very high levels of engagement. Many people who did not understand the concepts, uh, they were disconnected from it. They started saying, wow, this could be so interesting. They never thought that uh, operations and finance as a field could be made interesting through games. And most importantly, they opened up, they shared the questions they had, the fears they had, and we were able to answer them. And there was a lot of positivity at the end. A typical session uh, that is run through PowerPoints would never have got that kind of an engagement. People just came in, listened in, went back, but they kept doing the same old thing. But this was a very, very pleasant uh, difference. So this made me think, uh, and, and to top it, we again won the third prize at the corporate level. 
for doing games based learning for uh, uh, finance concepts so i thought if one could be fluke the second one can't be fluke there must be some science behind it right as to why this is working but before i did that i thought let me ask you all a quiz this was based on a survey that uh, a firm uh, deloitte did a consultant by name josh burson did for deloitte uh i would request you all to go through these questions that you see and try and choose the correct answer please type the answers in the chat window for example for the first question what percent of the uh, companies rated the work environments as complex if you think the answer is a just type 1a if you think it's b you type 1b request uh, all the part. yeah i'm able to see d from uh, atanu any other answers from others anand says it's a atanu says it's d okay Nina says it's A. Okay, so thanks for answering them. So we'll go one question at a time, Mohammed, if you don't mind. So you think it's B for the first question, right? Okay. And uh, Mullai Shanmuga Sundaram says it's C. Okay. The answer turns out to be D. Seventy-five percent of the companies surveyed, and I think that it's at least about hundred companies surveyed by Deloitte. They, the workers consider the work environment as complex um so let's move on to the second question the percentage of millennials who feel that innovation is important to choosing workplaces what do you think is the answer to question 2 Anand and Atanu feel it C. Mullai feels it C. Gopal and Mohammed feel it's D. The answer turns out to be D. But even if you consider C, which is sixty uh, percent, it's fairly a high number. So we are looking at the uh, the the survey results were actually eighty percent. So innovation is a lot more important to choosing a workplace according to the millennials. But C again, as I told you, C is also a fairly high number. So it's definitely much more than the 50% mark so uh, let's move on to the third question what percentage of the organizations feel that there is a need to reinvent learning and development atam says it's a nina says it's a mohammed says it's c anand says it's c and mullai says it's d well actually the answer again turns out to be d now when you uh, this may look surprising to some of us as to uh, are people really keen on uh, uh, reinventing lnd at a, at a 80% feel uh, there is there a need to reinvent lnd when we think about lnd we should not look at lnd as a department in our organization we should look at learning and development as a process much after we move out of uh, the academy or the learning teams in our respective companies there is a, always a constant need for learning even after we uh, on a day to day basis when you look at that perspective uh, many of the traditional learning mechanisms are not that effective so in that context this is uh, seen as an 80% so thanks vishan for uh, typing your answers the answer to question 3 was d okay moving on to uh, question number 4 the number of uh, the companies that have a program for simplifying work vishan says it's d atanu says it's d sushanta says it's d anand d neena d mullai d okay there is a, a very big uh, i mean all of you are uh, concurring on this particular question the answer is d there is a very big need for simplifying simplifying work and i am assuming that that's true in your respective organizations also 
it's not just a question of this survey but do you agree that that's the case in the respective organizations where you work to the need for simplifying work okay yeah so let's move on to one more quick um, true or false kind of question um in your respective organizations just take a look at uh, the context of where you are working um and answer these questions let's answer the first question do does your organization have change management initiatives and do they get easily driven atanu says it's false Nina says it's no. Anand says it's yes. Mullai says it's false. Okay, uh, it's interesting, Anand. Uh, your answer is yes. Uh, the rest of them seem to be saying no, but that's that's good. Good to know. I'll try to connect with you offline. Uh, let me try to understand better from you. So most of you feel change management initiatives are not easily driven in organizations. Okay. Now let's go to question two. All of us deal with clients, and we have to keep communicating the value that we deliver to them. How easy and simple and straightforward is it? False. It's difficult, right? Gopal say Gopal and Atanu says uh, say it's difficult. I think so far I've seen difficult uh, as the answers from all of you. So we all agree that it's not very easy to communicate. Uh, Uh, articulate value to the clients and uh, let's move on to the third question we all attend training programs how much is the retention rate and how much are the people actually able to apply the knowledge post the training vishan says it's very less atanu says it's false it's uh, basically it's easy it's not uh, that easy gopal says it's low neena says it's low mullai says it's partial so basically all these three questions plus the survey questions that you answered uh, are indicating at a particular trend that we need to be closely observant there is a drastic need to simplify there is a need to make low learning social and fun basically the fun element is missing and most importantly for learning to register it needs to be experiential now if i were conducting this uh, workshop uh, if i had an opportunity to meet you all in person or do it over tanberg i would not be walking you through slides because i know this is not the most effective way of communicating but given the limitations i'm at least trying to make it interactive because i would have actually done a game design workshop with all of you but considering it's a webinar i'm still trying to make the elements as uh, engaging as possible for learning to be effective there has to be a simplification a social element a fun element and an experiential element do you all agree okay thank you and in my experience games based learning is one very major way of achieving that i'm not saying that that's the only way but it's a very very significant way in achieving high engagement learning now having uh, discussed so far let's try to understand why games seem to be working now let's imagine our childhood or let's uh, uh, let's try to imagine our children or the children that whom we deal with our nieces nephews whoever we interact with right if you ask them to go and solve a math homework or let's ask them to read an english textbook what do you think their response would be and compare it with asking them to play a, play a game like scrabble monopoly or any kind of other board games where do you think they are likely to spend more time with with the textbooks or with games yes absolutely okay zishan's answer is very interesting my daughter spends time with neither 
<laughs> okay. Let's connect later, Lizishan. Um, James. I mean, all of us would have done that anyways, right? But if you closely observe, when you play a Monopoly or when you play a Scrabble or any kind of game, you actually end up learning. You you could end up learning new words from what others keep, uh, what others construct. You could end up, uh, you would end up uh, doing uh, addition and subtraction at least in Monopoly. And in some other higher sophisticated form of board games, you will end up learning more detailed max concepts. And you could go on for hours together with games. As even if you ask somebody to do homework for 10, 15 minutes, you get bugged. But if you ask them to play games, it goes on forever. So this is one example uh, from ch childhood. Now let's assume, in the case of adults, right, a lot of us are uh, health conscious. The, the health consciousness is spreading uh, very rapidly. But if you had a choice of going to the gym, lifting weights, uh, doing treadmills, right, in order to uh, improve our uh, body stamina, that's one choice we have. The other choice is we could go and play some games, volleyball, football, cricket, badminton, whatever we have. What would, you, what would our preference be? Are any of you in the audience uh, uh, either? So Zishan says either, depending on the situation, okay? Anand says games, of course. Now, if you closely observe, games are not, ju not just for fun. If you end up uh, playing for an hour or so, the body parts do get sufficiently exercised, uh, depending on the type of game you play. But you need to probably play it for slightly longer durations compared to uh, uh, an hour at the treadmill or uh, a gym, right? But you can find out games that give you the same kind of uh, health benefit that uh, a gym would do. So there is something related to human psychology in both these examples. And uh, because of the fun element embedded in the game, whatever you are actually ending up achieving is, uh, is a lot more uh, palatable to the mind. Now, let's see the neuroscience behind games. There have been some scientific studies done to see whether games are really active, uh, really effective. Uh, I'll not go into the technical terminologies, but there are apparently three parts of the brain that actually uh, uh, work much better when uh, it is initiated with a games-based environment. One is, typically when you uh, learn, you get disengaged after a while. This is called default node processing. After a while, you stop listening, your mind starts wandering. When you engage with a game, that default node processing gets inactivated, which means that you are more plugged in. Then there is a portion called ventral stasium, which aids in uh, engagement and that gets activated. And dopamine, uh, you might have all heard of the hormone dopamine, right? that gets released, that causes uh, heavy engagement, as in uh, high levels of enthusiasm, energy, which makes you uh, plugged in and concentrated. So this is uh, actually been proven in scientific studies. So it's not just games are uh, working for the sake of it, there is a science behind it. Now let's try to compare the, uh, this is a study done by uh, one of the famous games uh, based learning companies called Raptivity. Uh, if you see, there are multiple dimensions that they have uh, measured the traditional learning and games-based learning. Take a look at that box. When it comes to engagement, games-based is much superior. And uh, the other important aspect of games-based learning is the immediate feedback. Typically in a traditional learning, you might have to sit through a classroom for hours together and towards the end of it, there will be a test. Whereas, if you play a game like uh, a Snake and Ladder or uh, Monopoly or it can be any form. I mean, I'm just choosing some board games as examples. Imagine any game, any time you act, you, your feedback is immediately given to you. This is one very important reason why games work. We all want instantaneous feedback. We don't want postponed feedback. 
The last aspect is uh, you can tailor the learning pace to the needs of the individual. This usually does not happen in traditional learning where a standard learning content is thrust upon all the learners. So moving on, um, here are some very interesting examples across different dimensions where serious games get used. There was an interesting case study uh, in the company CSE. They had to collaborate with uh, three or four other vendors to deliver a project. Now, the typical way it happens uh, in vendor collaborations is that everybody gets into a boardroom, they start uh, doing PowerPoint presentations, uh, they start uh, the, the standard formal method uh, of uh, exchanging ideas is what happens. Now, they wanted to uh, avoid it. They engaged a, a game-based learning vendor and they deployed game-based techniques and uh, speeded up the project. They, they brought in the team collaboration and they ended up, if I remember right, delivering something like 15 to 20 months ahead of time. The, obviously, the details were not fully available. I can share with you the link uh, offline if any of you is interested. But productivity was the major benefit by uh, bringing the team collaboration and uh, enhancing the deliverable. Now, another useful uh, case study is in the case of Deloitte. All of us, as you are aware, um, are prone to biases while conducting interviews. When we recruit, uh, we all suffer from some kind of biases, positive or negative, right? We form judgments of the candidate. We try to uh, miss out asking certain kind of questions and post-recruitment, you realize that the candidate is not the right fit, despite the fact that you did your best in interviewing. Now, what Delart has done is, apart from the standard manager-based interviews, they have designed, uh, they are uh, piloting a game which will try to capture the behavioral and char uh, behavioral uh, characteristics of the person being interviewed. The traits get revealed by the person playing a game and they compare it and give it as a feedback to the uh, recruiting manager. That as an, is an additional data point uh, before, uh, what do you say, recruiting the candidate. This is one of the very uh, novel and uh, very useful applications of games. Of course, you have uh, two other companies that have listed uh, Agile competencies and uh, the, the Scrum Alliance is uh, deploying, sorry, Scrum Alliance is uh, deploying uh, for educational purposes. There is a last uh, case study, uh, a company by name Taos. Typically, there is a lot of uh, disconnect between, particularly in large organizations, between um, the top management and the ground level employees. To bring everybody on the same page, uh, a games-based approach was used to ensure that the employees clearly understand the goals of the management and vice versa, the uh, feedback from the employees also uh, get understood by the top management. So this again is a common, uh, this is also a unique uh, case study that I came across in the industry. There are of course many more such case studies, but uh, what I'm trying to highlight here is that games-based learning goes much beyond educational aspects. It could, uh, it could uh, span across recruitment, uh, productivity, it could span across uh, company communications, etc. Now, moving on, let me move on to something that usually uh, gets used interchangeably. Uh, the concept of Games-based learning and gamification. Have you all heard of gamification? How many of you know the difference between gamification and games-based learning? Okay. Zishan says yes. Okay. Anybody else? Anand says no. Okay. Nina uh, and Atam say no. Okay. We'll, we'll try to understand the difference. Um, but before we did that, just ask, answer this question. Uh, in social media, let's say some of you are Facebook and LinkedIn users, I'm assuming at least one of the two you'll be using, or probably both. Do you end up spending, you, you want to go into the website and just casually uh, spend about 5-10 minutes, but you actually end up spending like 30 minutes, much more than what you planned. Does this happen? 
Please type your answers yes or no. Okay, almost all of you say yes. Do you know why? Now let's see the answer as to why we do this. Let's take Facebook. Facebook uses gamification. Uh, Vishan is uh, definitely knowledgeable. I think Vishan we will connect offline. I'll probably take some insights from you. Uh, human intention to snoop is one probable dimension, definitely. I don't deny that. But there are other aspects that we'll try to understand from this slide. There are the human uh, behavior uh, or the motivational uh, as uh, the, the motivational aspects of uh, humans. There are eight dimensions, as you can see here. We want to have all of us want to have a sense of accomplishment. We want to have a sense of ownership in whatever we do. We would like to have scarce things, right? I mean, we we don't want to own what everybody owns. We want to kind of have a uh, own unique things. We want to avoid danger. Uh, we want to have a sense of thrill and adventure, sense of unpredictability. We are all driven socially, right? If somebody wants to do, we want to do it better. So there are multiple dimensions that drive human behavior and Facebook gamification is kind of exploiting all of it. And that's the reason why we end up spending a lot of time in Facebook. If you see from an accomplishment perspective, I'll not probably walk through each one of it, but uh, this slide is self-evident. The more followers we gain, we feel that that's a sense of accomplishment. If somebody likes, shares, responds to our post, we feel a sense of thrill in it. Uh, we keep, uh, we have an, a sense of enjoyment uh, when we update our profile picture, uh, when we see our friends, when we are able to see our memories, etc. Now, uh, So all of this is fundamentally related to our core uh, sense of uh, thrill or enjoyment or accomplishment and the, the various different examples, right? I mean, uh, let's talk about empowerment, see sharing photos. Uh, let's say I did this workshop, I went to this restaurant. It, it is a way of communicating uh, and expressing with others, right? So that gives a sense of uh, uh, I won't say accomplishment, empowerment, or uh, let's say you did a seminar, let's say you did a presentation, let's say you received the prize, you want to share it with others. So all of these core behaviors are uh, being uh, leveraged by Facebook and that's why we end up spending a lot more time on Facebook. Now let's go to LinkedIn. Just if you see, how many of you have seen this uh, uh, profile strength bar? I'm assuming you would have seen all of these three elements of uh, LinkedIn. One is the profile strength. One is uh, how many people have seen your profile, the metrics related to that. And the third is how many people uh, have endorsed you on various different skills. Now, just by showcasing these numbers to you, we are inherently, uh, I would say, motivated or inherently we get a feeling that we should do more of it. If, if that profile strength bar is probably just 75% filled, we know that there is something more to act on it. Just by showing, showing that circle, that triggers the humans to go and see what is missing in my profile. How do I make it 100%? When it comes to viewing our profile, just the rank on uh, the profile views, if it has gone down, hey, why is it gone down? Why are people not looking at my profile? That triggers the end user to act on it. The metric shows how popular you are. Then when it comes to endorsements, the LinkedIn also uses methods like those who use skills and endorsement get more profile views. So all of these are people want to showcase more of themselves. They want to be known. So these are the elements of gamification which is related to the core behavior that uh, gets exploited by these social sites and social sites are just one such example. We see motivation, uh, uh, gamification everywhere around in the world. But I just thought because a lot of us use social media, uh, these two examples might be appropriate. So moving on, these are the broad differences between gamification and game based learning. Let me walk you through a couple of key examples only. I mean, this slide uh, probably describes it in entirety. 
gamification is a uh, a more uh, a lower level i would say but the, the idea is to for, to nudge somebody to take some action or make them do something right it's it's some kind of a small trigger a reward accomplishment a feeling of accomplishment a point or badge etc some some kind of nudge to make it more engaging whereas when you consider a games based learning it's a lot deeper uh just playing a game to learn a concept is a lot more rewarding like when you play a monopoly or a snake and ladder or any game you kind of get immersed in it you don't really look for you you look for definitely look for points you try to win etc but you get engaged a lot more into it and it gives you a fuller learning experience so as as the slide says the the learning content is kind of morphed into the themes of the game so the the real learning uh intent of scrabble may be to uh, improve our vocabulary it kind of is not spelled out but it it kind of fits uh, gets fitted into the game and uh, gamification because it's just the initial triggers uh tax the elements of uh, motivation it's a lot cheaper to do a uh, game based learning is uh, a far superior solution and it takes a lot of time and uh, obviously it costs more so this slide anyway talks about various different points and uh, i thought i'll just briefly touch on it so uh that kind of is all that i wanted to mention in this presentation just to give you an orientation of uh, my own experience in terms of how games based learning has worked very effectively for me under different circumstances and how it's used in the industry i gave you some illustrations and basically i also highlighted the differences between gamification and games based learning to conclude i would say these are two quotes that come to my mind as to why games and gamification work it helps you to simplify no matter how complicated the concepts are if we cannot explain it in simple terms we ourselves don't understand it well enough this was a very famous quote by einstein and uh, benjamin franklin gave another very thought provoking quote usually in if you see typical uh, traditional learning we tell concepts right hey this is what it is this is what it is and usually when we tell something we forget when we teach there is a chance of remembering if, if it's just factual narration it gets forgotten teaching goes takes the engagement to the next level and some kind of uh, concepts get uh, remembered and registered by the users but gamification goes and that's the involvement part people get fully involved and that's why superior learning happens so i think with this i'll conclude the uh, today's uh, session i am opening it up for any q and a's if you have uh, please type your questions on any of the topics uh, discussed so far and i'll be happy to answer it hello okay how much is the indian learning industry really into games based learning okay actually uh, indian learning is uh, there are quite a few companies uh, and all corporates are seriously thinking about um, uh deploying gamification or games based learning into their curriculum it's still in the early stages but it's growing very rapidly and uh, i'll answer one uh, one question at a time okay let me take up zishan's um, question first i'll probably give you some metrics around it i don't have it handy but it's uh, growing very rapidly specifically in the mobile uh, based learning zishan uh, uh indian uh, the you will find a lot of mobile based games uh, coming up in the next uh, few years i'll i'll share with you the statistics i i do have it but not right now with me i'll share it with you gopal's question was uh, was your organization supportive of your initiative and if so how were they involved okay when i started this initiative both the experiments that i shared in the beginning uh were driven on my own uh i would say that the organization gave me a free hand to experiment i mean they did not necessarily support in the beginning because for them also it was not new uh, it was something new 
but they didn't oppose me right i mean they didn't prevent me from doing that itself is a great support so they allowed me to experiment they didn't probably fund or anything when you when you say support sometimes you feel that uh, it could be in the form of allowing you to try or the next level support could be the funding part luckily the experiments that i did were not of high cost and it was uh, very low budget but it had a very high impact and uh, so the funding support was not needed for me and that i would say is true for all games based learning initiatives you don't really need a lot of funds unless you want to digitize it right unless you want to go it uh, do it in a computer or you, you want to make a web based games etc it's it's a lot easy to do the prototypes uh but once they saw the results uh there there there, there was uh, i would say definitely a, a accomplishment and uh, the, the the i mean i did get rewarded and they uh, they gave me an opportunity to uh, do consulting in the games based learning area right now i'm a part of a games based learning consulting team so they did acknowledge the uh, uh what do you say the, the results and gave me opportunities to pursue uh do you know of the next question from atanus do you know of any games based learning tools that are used in the industry uh i can share with you some names of vendors uh, who actually uh, do games based learning one is raptivity uh, they are a pune based company there is a nolscape company based out of um, i think bangalore there is a there is another company called codec q u o d e c k uh, based out of mumbai and uh, there are uh, e there is a company called e mantras uh, i think based out of chennai so there are uh, quite a few vendors uh, who develop games based learning tools and in the us there is a company called learn right i mean there are plenty of vendors if you want i get, get get you the list offline any reference sites books okay definitely um once again i'll uh, i'll try to uh, share that with you uh, there is a course there a course called gamification offered by the university of pennsylvania that's a good uh, uh, course to learn gamification um there is uh, another website which i'll uh, i'm not able to remember the url i'll try to share that with you all um there is a uh, world renowned person yukai go uh, who has a, an excellent website on gamification uh, there is uh, books on gamification when you come to uh, there is uh, a book by uh, ken uh, application of games based learning uh, effective games based learning uh, once again i'll share that in an email to you why is this approach not taking off uh, it, it if it scores so well over the conventional methods okay so it's very difficult if you see uh, to change the convention see for whatever reason the corporate world is all about powerpoints and we know that how ineffective powerpoints are right and we know how ineffective the classroom trainings are but things are slowly changing in fact the change will be very rapid if you see in the next 4 uh, to 5 years or maybe a, a decade definitely in the 4 to 5 years you will find a, a massive change in the learning process uh we'll move away from classrooms we'll have all kinds of engaging learning content people are discovering it uh, slowly uh in fact according to a gartner report uh, gamification industry will be around 12 billion uh, by 2019 uh so a lot of action is happening it's uh, in the nas i won't say it's in the, it's, it's just over the nascent stage it probably the word gamification was coined sometime around 2010 2011 and uh, it has seen its uh, improvement in the last 5 6 years but it will see a much more uh, rapid increase in the next 4 uh, to 5 years and people take time to change so that's one reason why uh, it's not taking off uh one question to the uh, uh, sabari uh, and uh, sushma is there any way uh, by which i can uh, share the uh, answers to the questions to the participants meaning like uh, the books they asked and the websites they asked etc okay nina's question is uh, is it being adopted in the area of academics as well yes definitely uh, it is being adopted in uh, academics and it has been scientifically proven uh, and I, I, i once again i'll share with you articles that board games 
definitely cause higher engagement in students that uh, traditional curriculum uh, traditional classrooms don't unfortunately the adoption again once again it's very slow now uh, but it's going to it's bound to improve it's bound to improve because we know what is not working both in the corporate workplace as well as in the uh, uh, in uh, educational institutions it's more of theory lectures the same old stuff but uh, engagement is a, is going to be the key in the next couple of years and i think in pgscm uh, we had a derivative game possibly we had i remember one game in the supply chain course it's called the beer distribution game do you all remember that i did pgscm probably 10 11 years back so that's one game i remembered possibly there was a derivative game also okay sabri says that i can send him the ppt and the answers and uh, he'll be able to share with the participants okay that will be great uh, sabri so uh, any any other questions otherwise we can uh, wrap up yeah padmini srinivasan used to use monopoly to teach accounting excellent i mean uh, it was not the case in our batch but uh, i'm very happy that uh, monopoly was used in your batch i'm very happy it would have been a lot more fun and engaging in fact uh, just over uh, 10 days back there was an imb uh, reunion in chennai anusmaran happened in chennai i was talking to one of the current professors he was asking me how to make uh, finance learning fun and i was giving him some uh, websites and tips to make it fun monopoly was one of the games i recommended uh, and i'm glad that uh, another professor is actively using it so please do send any other questions or comments um, and also definitely please fill the uh, take 2 3 minutes to fill this uh, feedback form on how uh, useful the session was and if you have any areas to improve please point it out just one minute i'll send you the link uh, for the feedback form if you can take a couple of minutes to fill the feedback form and i'll also share with you my uh, email id uh, if you have any further questions uh, please feel free to shoot me an email thanks mulai thanks vision thanks gopal thanks thank thank you all for taking the time on a saturday to uh, attend it so i'm really grateful thanks atanu yeah i'll just uh, stop the recording now and uh, thank you all have a good weekend